Better lock them doors and turn them lights down low. And we play that music soft and slow. Baby, we ain't got no place to go. I hope you understand. Okay. <laughs> What's happening, guys? So, my name is Sumed. Welcome to the channel, Flow State Activation. I'm a peak performance coach. I'm originally a positive psychologist. That's my background. Uh, welcome to the channel. If you're watching me for the first time, it's great to be here. Talking about an interesting topic about expansiveness versus constriction or contraction, okay? And the difference that it makes in your flow state. It's so important that we differentiate these two concepts and we start to understand the ideas that, you know, metaphorical processes can sometimes cause unexpected unconscious connections, right? And we got to speak in much more broader terms and speak more in depth about this topic because I think it's very, very powerful in how it shifts our attention from just me, me, me to we, 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 okay? We, we, uh, oh, <laughs> c'est ça, uh, uh, qu'est-ce que c'est? <laughs> All right. So, in any case, man, expansion versus contraction or constriction. So, expansion is abundance, right? Possibility. Whereas constriction is a closing off of limits or a limitedness or a scarcity, right? And so, once we understand that main difference, now we can play in both of these realms. We can make it like they're these two centers, these two different planets, right? Where, you know, you get very in your head and very uh, closed in or boxed in in your own ideologies, or you get very stubborn in the way that you do something, right? And you don't want to change. Whereas the other one is just complete change, complete transformation, flexibility, breakthroughs, uh, and I've often found that it's the difference between having fun and not having fun, right? Expansiveness is fun. Being constricted and being in your own bubble isn't really that fun. It feels isolating. It feels like I can't connect with anybody, okay? So this is very, very important and key to understand the, and distinguish these two states of mind. Okay, because they are ultimately states of mind. I found one tool which is particularly helpful is to exaggerate. Now, exaggerated humor is a letting go. And I believe that exaggeration is a tool for transcendence. I truly do. Because let's say you're having a bad day, right? And you're just saying, why does this always have to happen to me? Okay, so you hear some bad news and you go, why does it have to happen to me? Now, if you exaggerate, why does this have to happen to me all the time? I, I keep doing this to myself. If you exaggerate it and you laugh at the fact that you've just exaggerated that and that, that just popped into your mind and it is a thought, it is not my thoughts, you can now take power over it by changing the, the comical aspect of the voice and exaggerating it to a very ridiculous sounding voice, right? And this, we do this in neuro-linguistic programming or NLP as well. We'll take a certain concept and then we'll make it sound much more deeper, much more important than it sounds, right? You could make it sound like a movie theater voice, one man, one desire, Keanu Reeves in, right? But we can also make it very light and comical and playful. <laughs> Right? So one is a playfulness, one is a seriousness. In between both of those, there is charisma. And when you can play in the spectrum, you can start to change and transform a certain state of mind, a certain significance that we're giving to it and learning to see the humor and the fun in what we're doing. You see, expansiveness is a sharing. I want to share with all of you these uh, insights that I've gotten. Whereas the other one is very self-serving. It becomes narcissistic, it becomes closed up. It's narcissistic vulnerability, right? And the sense of, you know, we have to learn how to integrate flow into our waking lives. I think integration is a big aspect of this. A lot of the time, let's say you have an incredible experience in life, 
you have a peak experience, right? You move somewhere where you've never been before. Like for instance, I was in Bali a little while ago, right? Like that was a big shock to my system. So I needed like uh, at least a month to integrate after that because it was just all in, right? And it was my first event also kind of going abroad and, and doing that. Of course, we're already planning for our next event, but we've got to understand that how did it feel? Right? So remember how it felt and then bringing it down to a more neutral or a natural level, making it more available to you. So let's say that it gave you a feeling of heightened excitement. For instance, I'll give you the example of like, let's say Tony Robbins, right? Tony Robbins isn't always like on 24 seven, right? He has moments of rest, but we don't see that. We just see him on stage going, yeah! Yes, 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 yes. Okay, we see him as this rah rah kind of motivational guy, right? And everyone recognizes him because he's helped presidents and, and he has a high status, and all these different things. We also got to understand that he primes himself to be that way, to have that energy on stage. Cold plunge, right? Uh, probably incantations in the morning, meditating in the morning, right? all of these different rituals that we don't see. So what if, like Tony just maybe he's, uh, you know, he's talking to his wife and, he, and he's saying, uh, uh, hey dear, do you wanna maybe get some coffee after the, after the event? We could go down to this place that I heard, actually I know the chef and, let's say that that is his genuine interaction, right? But before that, let's say he was on stage going, Rah! right? And of course, the, the man is gifted with uh, giant genetics because of his like, pituitary gland disorder. But, but besides that point, you know, um, I'm not making fun of him in any way because I, I respect the man. Uh, I, I understand that, you know, he has a very unique way or unique worldview in the way he sees things. So that excitement that he has on stage has got to be calibrated down as he's speaking to his wife or the general public or just a random person, right? And I think that that beingness has got, is now integrated, right? It's, it's now a part of his life that he's a public speaker, he speaks. And it's almost like I felt this today, right? I wasn't really interacting with many people, but then one person came around and then the, the, the precise opportunity presented itself for me to have a conversation. We exchanged uh, details. Uh, she got my card. I gave her my card. And it's like, the Makara, and I'm very, uh, you know, J Guru Dev Makara, okay, because, or Makara in the sense, uh, the sea monster of Hindu mythology, which is the imagery that I completely get whenever I think of myself in my highest self, right? And the Makara just waits and waits and waits and waits, and when it's the right moment, they're ready to go. They're prepped for it. They've been prepping their entire life. Okay, and it comes from this internal training system. Okay, so constrictiveness is asking like, uh, are you with me or are you against me? Is this an interesting to th thing to say or is this not a very interesting thing to say? Okay, the constrictive mindset or scarcity mind puts you in the split mind where you're constantly ruminating and, and, you know, thinking of different dimensions. And, you know, uh, if you've ever read the, these Goosebumps books, right? Choose your own adventure novels, or even uh, these uh, Netflix uh, shows like, you know, Bandersnatch or any of these other ones where you can choose like which, like turn to page 12 and turn to page, you know, 49. They give you only two options, but life isn't only two options, bro. Right? It's not like, oh, uh, should I choose to eat pizza today or choose to eat sushi today? No, it's like you can choose pizza, sushi, okay, uh, Chinese food, uh, Mexican food. There's so many alternatives, right? And when we get so classified between making two choices and making, like, you know, this decision, or we get into this decision-making fatigue, which constricts us. So there's decision-making fatigue, right? There is judgment fatigue, judging ourselves or judging someone else which constricts, 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 right? Making it more, less likely for that thing to happen because now we've, we've added a, a limit around it as we've judged it. And then of course, there's also the persona, 
am I being the right kind of person right now, right? That, these three are the most common constrictive factors. So if you can deal with these three in very unique ways, now you can transform your experience. And it comes from, you know, feeling free and willing to let go because it's this internal world modification, okay? This internal world modification is that of, oh, I feel kind of, you know, stuck or tired. Maybe I haven't gotten enough coffee this morning or whatever it was, right? Kind of feeling out of it, a little bit dazed, jaded, cynical, constricted. What did I do in that moment? I understood. I'm going to reduce the obstacles for me to take on my own most natural path. And I do this with my clients too. I see the obstacles, I help them to reduce the amounts of obstacles or at least transcend them or go past them or completely demolish through them or, you know, and then the client can take on their own path, their most natural path, their most flowing path. It's mainly the blocks that block us. Okay, so there's mental blocks, physical blocks, energetic blocks, spiritual blocks, right? There's many different types of blocks that constrict and make people feel bad and suffer and go internally. So once you can get to this point where instead of saying, uh, are you with me or against me? You're saying, let's win together. Instead of saying, you know, uh, is this interesting for me to say or is this not interesting for me to say? Instead, you're saying everything can be made interesting because it's coming from me. And I'm an interesting dude, or, or a gal, or dudette, right? And, and so that power in positivity, in reframing, and being able to not look at just uniformity and standardization, right? Which uniformity is transitory. It gives us a feeling of, of safety, of certainty, of, of security. But in order for transformation to happen, we need to break through that. We need to transcend that idea of uniformity. And we need to get into our own individuality and individual optimization, okay? Instead of standardization. Now, a lot of people will disagree with this metric, right? Uh, coming from a very authoritarian, Confucian type of system, uh, you know, we, we, we as a society, we love to classify things and categorize things and, oh, this is right and this is wrong and this is good and this is bad and this is positive and this is negative. These are all valences. These are all ways that we experience the world, right? And this duality. But there is this non-dual or Advaita way of thinking about things where we transcend the duality, where we understand it's no more about black and white thinking. There's an in-between, there's a gray area that oftentimes we're missing out on, okay? So I believe that if you are struggling with feeling very inwards and constricted, I understand, like I'll give you, uh, I'll act out the different dynamics in both, right? So what does expansiveness look like, sound like, feel like, okay? So here, let me get into character first. This is expansiveness first and then I'll show you constricted, constriction. Wow. <laughs> you know what, man? Everything always goes my way. It's, it's so amazing. Today's so fucking beautiful. Oh my goodness. The sun is just shining on my face and oh, there's so many possibilities waiting to happen. I can't wait until I get some food, some grub in my system. <sighs> you know how grateful I am to be alive, to be here, to speak to all of you? <laughs> It's just so beautifully fascinating. And I'm not even saying that in a weird virtue signaling type of way, but it's just like, man, I'm just ready to conquer the day. Let's go. Let's get it. Oh, 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 Goodness gracious. Okay, that is expansiveness. Some of you felt that. Now, what does constriction look like? First of all, I have to change my body language for this, okay? <sighs> yeah, no, I, I mean, I'd rather not do it. I mean, it's pointless anyway. I mean, who do those people think they are? 
bunch of retards, man. I, I can't even believe that they said that about me. <laughs> they think that they are better. I mean, come on now. Like, this shit just, just, this shit is ridiculous at this point. Why, why can't we get along? Like, why? What the fuck is wrong with people, man? I can't believe that. Oh, fuck, I'm getting this headache again. I can't. Keep getting this. Damn. You get the difference, right? One is a complaining mode, right? Constriction is a, is a complaining, whereas expansiveness is an expression. You could still be complaining while you're in expansiveness. How do you do that? Let's say you're feeling sick, you're unwell. Wow, <laughs> I feel like crap today, but guess what? I'm gonna get better. You look for a solution and you express the solution along with the complaint. Whereas in the other one, you're just staying in that bubble. You're ruminating in that bad state and that bad feeling. Whereas the other one, you're going, man, I feel really bad today. I'm ill, have some sniffles, you know, I'm not feeling too well, low on energy. I can change that. Give me a cup of coffee. I'll take a nap. I'll drink some soup and I'll be back at it again. I'm just, I just know this is just a minor setback for me. And when I come back, I'm gonna come back so much stronger, so much more potent, so much in the zone that they won't be able to recognize me anymore. Okay, that's the beauty and the power of expansive energy. And I hope that I've demonstrated today the difference between these two and how you can optimize it and use it, use this kind of mentality in your daily life. It's that internal world modification as within, so without, right? Once you figure out, okay, how can I feel good in here? You'll start to notice everything clicking out out there, okay? But if you feel bad in here, it's gonna be difficult for you to feel good out there or get results or, you know, get people reaching out to you or, you know, having opportunities uh, like just given to you, right? Like when you're in expansive energy, you get like a free cup of coffee or, you know, you get these little moments, right? That just start to stack in its positivity. It's, it's the feeling that someone can connect with you, right? You can give them a high five. You can, you can elate, you can raise the frequency of w whatever you're doing and, and however you're being. Whereas the other one is like, yeah, forget them. I'm one track minded. I can't be with those people. They're bunching, you know, complain, 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 right? So this is the main difference. If you can manage this, and if you need help with this, by the way, reach out to me because I've dedicated my life to helping people access the state of mind. And not only temporarily, because we know a flow state is temporary, man. You know what I mean? Like you can learn about it. You can be like, oh yeah. Uh, you can look at it scientifically. Oh, yeah, dopamine is a reward chemical. That means we seek it. So we seek the flow state. Listen, that's not going to really help you, man. You, you can go and study this stuff scientifically. When it comes down to experience, comes down to practice. And I've worked with athletes. I work with, you know, Instagram influencers. I've worked with, you know, different people with different walks of life, right? Healers, uh, entrepreneurs, you name it. I've worked with them, okay? I've worked for a very long time. I'm, I'm turning 30. Uh, next year, uh, this this year, sorry. <laughs> you see what I'm saying, right? You forget, you're, you're in the time, you're timelessness. You forget your own age sometimes. <laughs> in any sense, uh, I hope you guys are having an incredible day. May the flow be with you and stay legendary. Let's talk soon. You know what to do. Hit that like, subscribe, all that good stuff. Let's go. Upward Spiral Gang.